Okay, let's see if that'll do well enough. That's really close up, but oh well. Oh, this is going to have to work. Okay. All right. So we'll do a little bit of an overview of some stuff in a chapter one. Yes. Yes, I do. Actually, I think I have physical room and and just general room. Yes. So just see me after. I don't think you need that yet. I got ad codes. As I say that, hopefully I brought them. We'll see. So you got to see me after for everything. Um, okay. Blah 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 blah. Let me see where to start. Nah. Okay. Here's a few things. Um, let's not start there because that's not the most interesting thing. Ooh, what about fractions? Yeah. So we'll do some. Uh, we will do some stuff with fractions. I want to talk about some general stuff about fractions because that's everybody hates fractions. Every level of mathematics, but part of me wishes it wasn't such a big deal. Uh, we all deal with fractions automatically, believe it or not. If, if I had like a full gallon, a full uh, tank of gas, and I used up an eighth of a tank, one eighth of a tank, how much gas is left? So if I had a full tank of gas and I used up one eighth, so I used up one eighth of the tank, what's left? Seven eighths. I love it, right? Because seven eighths. Plus one eighth is eight eighths, which is a full thing. I love it. So you can only add two things if they're like terms. And I think we talked about this a little bit with the warm-up sheet, but I can't remember. Uh, that's what LCD does, is it makes fractions like terms. I have seven of these plus one of the same thing, so then I got eight of those things. So the bottoms aren't the same, they're not like terms. That's it. That's the whole reason we do that. It wouldn't make any sense for this to be eight sixteenths. So you add gas to it, and you ha end up with less. That would suck, right? You go to the gas station to just lose gas. Yeah, it's less gas now. Good. All right. All right. I don't understand that. So that can't be true. I've got eight what? Eight eighths. That's why the bottom doesn't change when you add subtract, because it's kind of like you wouldn't say, well, what's a 7x plus 1x? 8x, right? You don't have suddenly 8x squared or something. No. I see 8x's. So here I see 8 eighths. So don't make too much out of it. That's the reason we need LCD from when we add or subtract. So I think I did show you sort of a trick to finding LCDs a little bit easier. You know? I can't remember now. Let's try it. Um, what you got, Jeff? I don't know, man. What about... Let's do this. Make this 15 Make this. Uh, uh, let's do. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. That looks yummy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. Your idea. Yeah, it's different. Yes. Um, I showed you kind of like not a trick, really. It's a cool idea. Um, and this is not really the way you're normally taught how to do this, but it's really, it, I love it because it's very much right at the heart of the idea. Um, can somebody tell me what these have in common? What's the biggest number they have in common? The biggest number that goes into both? Three. three. Fifteen is three times five. five. Yes. Thirty-three is three times eleven. eleven. Now you can really see who's missing what. I always equate it to two kids with ice cream and I get one sprinkles and this was like, I want sprinkles, and give them, you got more, and then I just eat all the ice cream, but you're giving the one that's missing something what they're missing relative to the other one. So what's this guy missing that that has got? Yeah, he's got a three and a five, and this guy has an 11 and a three. They already both have a three, they don't give a shit. They have a bowl with some ice cream and some sprinkles. He's missing the sprinkles. So you give him the sprinkles. You multiply top and bottom to make it legal. I haven't actually changed the number, I've just changed what the fraction looks like, right? 4 divided by 2 is the same thing as 6 divided by 3. 
they're just two different ways to write two. Are you guys with me? So that's what I do when I build a fraction up. Right? And now, of course, what's he missing? Yeah, five. So you multiply by five. Lock it. So now I get 77 over what? 165 plus 25 over 165. They both have 165 on them because they both end up with 11 times 3 times 5. And, I, and so you end up with? 102 over 165. Does 3 go into the top? Why does 3 go into the top? You guys remember? 1 plus 0 plus 2 is 3, which is a 1 plus 0. Does 3 go in the bottom? Yeah. Is this, is this obvious that it's going to reduce? Yeah. No, wait a minute. Now it is. Was it obvious before we talked about it? No. It's like, I would never think it's going to reduce. That's a 2, and that's a 5, and I'm like, no. That's it. But now I see 3 goes in. And now you have a quicker way to check that shape, right? You, you with me? And that's yeah. the thing we talked about yesterday that you guys were appropriately upset about that nobody ever told you about. Um, so if I divide by 3, let's see. I'm going to go and I divide this by 3. Think about this. Isn't 102 90 and 12? 3 goes into 90 30 times, into 12 4 times, so it's 34. And 165 is a little bit easier. We just did, isn't that 3 times 55? You guys see that? Again, I know I'm doing like a lot, and there are other ways to do what I'm doing. But it's good for you guys to know what flexibility there is, and different things you're allowed to do, and even just knowing what you can do. 3 times 55, so that means when I divide this by 3, I get 55. And that looks pretty done. All right? This is 2 times 17, this is 5 times, I ain't got nothing in common. I'm done. You guys alright? So you guys look a little shell shocked. What's important is you understand the idea, and then you try it out. You try it out. You see how it feels. You try this stuff out. Um, okay, what about multiplying and dividing fractions? Why is that a little bit easier? Ah, this is going to suck, but too bad. Figure this room out. What about multiplying and dividing fractions? No, careful, careful. Well, hello. How many ounces can you buy? A lot more if you don't put Starbucks. <laughs> Sorry, I keep shipping Starbucks. <laughs> oh, that is a um, So, help me out for you. I'm going to jump way ahead just for a second, but you guys should be handling handle most of this. X plus X, of course, is 2X. But what is X plus X squared? Uh oh. Careful. I don't see two in it. I see an x and I see an x squared. Why was I able to add these? Because they're like terms. I got a chair and a chair, I got two chairs. If I had a chair and a dog, I got a freaking chair and a dog. What the hell? I don't got a chair dog. Right? The next Nickelodeon cartoon. Chair dog. Oh, sorry. You a cat dog? No? Right. So these are not like terms. There's no way to consolidate them to make any sense. Right? I either get people telling me it's 2x or 2x squared, or I get x cubed, and I don't see any freaking x cubes. But, so this is, you can't do anything. It's, it's not doable. It's already simplified. But what's, what's x times x squared? Anybody remember? x to the third power. So multiplication division is nowhere near as strict on what they need to happen to be able to be done. I can't add those two things, but I can multiply them. So what's that mean for fractions? When I add subtract, I need like terms. There's no way around it. But when I multiply, I don't. So like 3 fourths times 5 sevenths. Let's start here. Don't make like terms. That's crazy. How do you do this? You cross? You yeah. multiply? No, 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 no. Sorry. I overran. Uh, the only, only, let me get this out of the way right now. The only time you cross multiply is if you have a fraction equals another fraction. Because then you can multiply both sides by 7, so it looks like it just goes up. Yes. Multiply both sides by 5, 
So it's just a shortcut to what's called clearing fractions. That's the only place where it works. Now, I would accept cross-reduce, but there's no reducing I can do. Help me out here. What's 3 times 5? If I do this, does that change things? It's still 15 over 1. 3 times 5 is 15. 1 times 1 is 1. So that's how fractions work. 3 times 5 is 15. 4 times 7 is 28. There. Because think about what this is saying. What am, I, what's, what am I multiplying by? 3 and 5. So I'm multiplying by 15. What am I dividing by? 4 and 7. So what am I totally dividing by? 28. That's why 15 on top, 28 on the bottom. Makes sense. Maybe. <laughs> See if your face is on it. You lost me at hello. Sure. <laughs> Alright, maybe. Hopefully. Now, of course, I mean, that can do this now. A little more interesting would be 10 over 21 times 14 over 55, right? Because now the, the really silly thing to do would be to multiply across first. Because then you make big-ass numbers that you have to reduce. I'd much rather reduce them when they're small-ass numbers. So what, um, why am I allowed to reduce? Because anything on the top will cancel with any in the bottom because they're opposite operations, right? Top means multiply, bottom means divide. So what goes into both of these? Five. So you get two. What goes into these two? So then I get four. Four. Thirty-three. Now if you didn't multiply and then reduce, you'll still get the same answer if you do it correctly. But man, you are really raising the level of difficulty. Which is fine if you want to do that for yourself. I don't know why you'd want to. Okay, so we did see a problem like that yesterday, but just gotta go over fractions totally. Um, let me see. Blah blah blah. Oh, how about this? Alright, here's something really interesting. What do you do with dividing fractions? And does anybody know why this should we do what we do? Yeah. Alright. I don't know if anyone's ever shown you why you do this weird ass thing besides just because we say so. If I have four ninths divided by six, uh, well, that's not too soon. let's do eight, that's a big change, Jeff. eight, uh, do it, do it, 27. Okay. You might know what to do, right now you might have forgotten, I don't know, but you might know what to do, but do you know why we do it? Does anybody remember what you do? Flip, Flip what? The, eight the second one, yeah. right? So what you would do is you would rewrite this as 4 ninths times 27 eighths. Now, does anybody remember that now? Yeah. All right. Huh? They're right there, right? Yeah. How are you guys doing? you guys remember that? Anybody know why you do that? Besides, besides <coughs> zero. Why? I don't want to. So as a student, I want you to realize this because I live off of this shit. You have got to say why. Don't don't say it like an asshole. I'm not looking to bid, would you? But say why do we have to do that? Why does that work? Why you know this is the time to I, I live off of that. If I can't explain it, I'm in the wrong job. I need to know now so I can go buy something else. Right? Yes. Beautiful. So now watch this. You just just this is an explanation about why this shortcut works. This is a shortcut. I am not saying you must do it the way I'm about to do it. Do you understand? Because I always have somebody going, Oh my God, what are you doing all this shit for? You can just do that. I'm explaining why this works. Please, dear God, do this. But here's why it works. All right. First step, you're already going to be like, no way. But oh well, just stay with me, all right? How do I rewrite something divided by something as a fraction? So what's being divided? Four ninths is being divided by 827. So already you're like... Thanks. Is everybody kind of with me still? I know that I made it look worse, didn't I? Yeah. Totally did. And that's, we're really good at that, Matt teachers. But remember, this is not a way I want you to do these. This is why what we do here works. That bottom sucks. The fact that there's two fractions, it's like fractionception, right? It's fraction within a fraction. That sucks. But let's focus on the bottom for a second. What's the best number to have on the bottom? No, what's the best number to have on the bottom of something? 
one, because then it's not really a fraction, is it? It's seven over one is seven. How do I make, what do I multiply this by to make it become one? The reciprocal, what? like it's being divided by 27, so how do I cancel that out? Multiply by 20, see how they, they cancel? As, as an eight on top, would I put an eight on the bottom so these would cancel? Now whatever I do to the bottom, I better do to the top. So this is four ninths times 27 over eight over one. So don't do that shit. Do this, but now understand there's a reason why we do this. Do you guys see that? Yeah. Okay, I like it. I came up with a whole other thing too, but that's not as good as this. This is very straightforward. You have to get past this shit. Remind yourself I'm not telling you to do it this way. I want you to see why things work the way they do, and if I can't tell you, then like I said, we need to stop. And then, of course, how do you finish this out? So you just get coolness. Okay. Is that going to work every time? Yes, whenever you have two fractions dividing, you multiply by the reciprocal. Because it didn't matter what numbers I picked up, could have just done the same exact thing, right? None of the numbers made that work any better or worse or anything. So it doesn't even matter what the two fractions are, dividing, multiply by the reciprocal, bam. No, no, I, I just made the numbers, if I would have made that 5 and this 11, none of that would have happened. I would have just multiplied across. But if you can reduce across or up and down, do it. Make your numbers smaller, that makes sense. Yeah, it depends. I mean, if the book does say something like write your answer as a mixed number, mm -hmm. what would that look like? One, One and a half. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. So that was that. Where else do I want to go? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, at the beginning of the class, all the numbers you look at are going to be what's called real numbers. There's a whole other set of numbers that include the real numbers, a bigger set of numbers that we're going to get into later this semester. Right? The naming is unfortunate. Uh, I got a little video I'm going to show you when we get to that point to give you a little bit of history. When they first created negative numbers, there were a whole slew of people that were like, no, 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 There's, what the shit? I gave negative four apples. Who are you? Now, as students especially, y'all understand negatives exist all too well. I like bank accounts and stuff. Uh, so we have no problem with the fact that negatives do mean something physically. They could mean I'm going backwards in a car instead of forwards. They could actually show direction. They could show you owe something. All that kind of stuff, right? Uh, yeah, there's another set of numbers, what's unfortunately called imaginary numbers. The name stuck. These could have been called imaginary numbers. Because there are, again, there were people that are like, no, that's heresy, that's bullshit. And now we're like, calm down. This other set of numbers has the unfortunate name of imaginary. So we're going to talk about that later this semester. We're going to try to make it make physical sense. Um, but for right now, we have, let's break real numbers down. So we have what's called the natural numbers. These are the things that came naturally to us. So if I'm a caveman, I'm like, you know, one rock, two rock. Maybe not, I don't know, caveman language, sorry. I don't like math and English, it's the two major languages. So uh, natural numbers came naturally, which is one, two, three. Makes sense. Then, of course, oh, I've got a caveman, he's got a rock, he loses his rocks, and now he's got, he's got to come up with the idea of zero. There are whole civilizations that did not have the concept of zero. They didn't invent. Babylonians, they invented the idea of zero right before their civilization ended. They're like, zero, what the hell? Really, we're done? Okay. Uh, so it's really weird nowadays, you guys don't even realize all the history behind, I mean, even think about why the number two looks the way it does, especially when I do it, but, you know, anybody know what these are? These are Hindu Arabic symbols that we basically just borrowed or stole or whatever you want to call it. Right? They can look very different. I teach a 120 class where I teach students 
Mayan numbers. Here's how you write 11 in Mayan. I call it blueberries and pancakes. Because each pancake is five, and the, and the blueberries are one. So that would be 11. Alright, I'd like to show you guys that. <laughs> you guys with me? What's more yummy math? Then the yummy makes more sense. Uh, anyway, anyway. I'd like to tell you about that, just to make you realize our math, we want to learn it, because it's something we as a society have developed and agreed on. But it's really nice to know there were other options. I think that just kind of helps us go, all right, I'm going to learn this shit, but I understand there's other stuff outside of this that could have been other ways that we could have done this. You guys never really think about it. I don't blame you. Why would you go, what does seven look like that? Why would you do that? But that's something to think about. Um, so this dude loses his rock, so he's got to come up with the idea of zero. So thankfully, we've got a whole number, so the number looks like a whole. It's what's added for whole numbers. Is all this familiar? You guys remember these names? And then what comes next? So what's he going to do? He lost his rock, and he wants a rock, so he's got to go next door and borrow a rock. So now he's in debt. He owes a rock, so now he's got to come up with the idea of negatives. We call these. Anybody know what we call these? Starts with an I. Imagine. Integers. Not imaginary yet. Did you spell it right? Yeah. Integers. Now he drops that rock and it cracks in half. So he's got to invent the idea of fractions. So the general word we use for the idea of fractions is rational numbers. What's the root word of rational? Ratio. So the numbers that can be written as a ratio. Does that make sense? Do you need your sense? Right, so you drop the rock, then it's got half a rock, and so I can represent that. Uh, what else can be written as a fraction besides fractions? Is three a rational number? Yes. See? So as long as it can be written as the ratio of two whole numbers, where the bottom's not zero, then it is rational. What about 0. 0.67? Is that rational? Beautiful. It's 67 over 100, right? Tenths, hundredths. Decimals are just special fractions that fit into our base 10 number system. I have no idea why we have a base 10 number system. I have no idea. Um, so this is 67 over 100. What about a number like pi? What is pi? Three, 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 so there are fractions that come out to be decimals that never stop. But if they never stop and they have no pattern to them, they are called irrational, which makes sense. So irrational numbers are stuff like pi, square root of 7, all the freaky ass things, right? The ones you can't represent as decimals that stop or decimals that have a pattern. How are you guys doing? Are you guys, is this familiar? No? Yes? No? You don't want to talk to me? Okay. And all these together make the real numbers. And as I promised, there's a bigger group that we'll talk about later this semester called the complex numbers. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So there's that. So you have problems, I'll say identify uh, all of the whole numbers in this list. Identify all the integers in this list. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. We don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. Ooh, here we go. We talked already about um, order operations. All right. I gave you that different saying for it. Because remember, please excuse my dumbass son. Uh, if you have a son, you're like, yeah, that applies. Because uh, we are dumb. Uh, so order operations we've covered a bit already. 
exponents uh, more directly. Uh, so, no, this does not use an exponent, but remind me, what's x plus x plus x plus x? Words. So somebody in history said, there's got to be a better way to writing, like, if they had 80 x's, he's like, oh my god, I'm not going to write x plus 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 x So he just said, all right, everybody, 80 in front of an x means I got 80 x's at And everybody's like, cool, man. You with me? That's, that's not exactly the way, but it's basically the way it happens. Uh, what about, and then the guy on the other side of the earth, he's like doing this. He's like, oh, screw you, man. Shit. You stole that around. What the flip? So let's see. What if I put it here? It looks like division. What if I put it here? It looks weird as shit. Let me just put it here. And I'll tell everybody, hey, a four up there means I got four of these things multiplying. This is kind of like on par with the whole, why does two look the way it does? And why don't we use pancakes and blueberries for a number <coughs> Right? This is all, this, this notation is a complete choice. We just chose it and told everybody what it meant. And everybody said great, except the one guy, we shot him. No problem. Right? The history of math is actually there's poisonings and duels and spies and sabotage. Oh, shit. Uh, anyway, you guys never hear about this. Um, it, most of you guys know this, but that's really, this whole idea, the fact that it's just because we were kind of like lazy, leads to all the properties of exponents that we'll talk about later this semester. Somebody help me out. What would this be? Negative 1 to the 7th power. Careful. I'm not adding anything. What's negative 1 times negative 1? Positive 1. Times another negative 1? So think about it. Every pair of negatives, don't they kill each other? So when I have 7, how many pairs do I have? These kill each other, these kill each other, these kill each other. So the answer is negative one. Why is there a negative left alive? Because there's an odd man out. He's just standing outside of it. They're killing each other. Sure. And then he's like, oh, there I am. So if I have negative one to the 88th power, that's positive one. Because you have 44 pairs of negatives that kill each other. There's no negatives left alive. You guys with me? That's a very kind of basic idea that's easy to not even realize is there. Uh, so that's positive. Yeah. Kick ass. Okay, okay, okay. All right, I think that's the last thing I wanted to say about chapter one. Let's get a little bit into chapter two. Uh, by the way, about 12 o'clock, we're going to do a little tiny field trip. We're not going to the history of the museum, the National History Museum, right? Just going to go see where the tutoring centers are, where my office is. Sorry, nothing overly exciting. Uh, the math is just too exciting, so we're going to go. The bread and butter of algebra is solving equations, right? So it's really important. This is the part where students don't see the utility in it. And it's sort of like if you wanted to play basketball. And if you go to a basketball camp, and it's a really good basketball camp, they're going to be doing some drills that don't make immediate sense to you. But there are these things. So for example, even football. Anybody like football? You guys like football? You ever heard about the, the football, I think in the 80s, and maybe they still do it, but they had football players with uh, doing ballet. Yes, and why would they do that? Balance. So when the shit in a football game do you really go and do a plie and stuff, right? <laughs> when? No, no time. But um, there's things to be gained from doing that, right? Um, are we all right? Um, so what am I trying to say about that? I completely forgot what I wanted. Way too far off the ballet and football. Um, so there's, we do a bunch of solvent equations before we get to the point of why they're so useful. At this level, we are just doing the balancing stuff. And, and if you're doing this, you're like, I want to, I want to play basketball. What the, do this. I want to play basketball. Just do this. And and it gets frustrating because you're like, I, what do I do this for? So when we're learning equation solving, they're not going to necessarily come from something. In the real world, I have equations that come from observations I make. So I have the weather. I'm going to try to predict the weather. How many variables are involved? 
a lot. So I can set up an equation related to the variables and what the outcome is and try to predict what the outcome with, will be if the variables change. Are you guys semi with me? So in the real world, equations come from observations we make. And we saw them. Here we're just learning the idea of solving equations. So they're not always going to come from somewhere specific, right? Um, so if I just tell you right now, if I just say I have a number, and when I add 2 to it, I get 9, you obviously know the number is 7, seven right? You don't need the help of the algebra. You're like, well, then there you go, Jeff. I'm out of here. No, because that's a very simple equation that I can just keep everything in my head because it's just one stupid thing, right? Um, so when I write this on the board, I forgot already what I said. X plus 2 equals 9, right? We're trying to get down the process so that when I have a more disgusting look at an equation, I can just use the process on it. I can't keep everything in my head. When I've got like double the difference of a number in 7 added to 4 times that number is the number divided by 2. Oh my god, I'm not going to do all that shit in my head. I need some system to keep track of what's going on. And what we're always trying to do is uncover this. This guy has been buried under plus 2. So how do you kill the plus 2? How do you get rid of it? Subtract 2. And if I do it to both sides, that maintains the equality. Right? I like it. So if I had 5 people on this side and 5 people on that side, and I add 1 to this side, how do I maintain equality? Add 1 to this side. Yeah. So if I subtract 2 from this side, I better subtract 2 from that side. And then the equation is still true. So whatever I get left over is going to be what my x is. Because now I got x seven. is 7, of course. Right? And some of you guys are still like, where do you do the damn answer? But again, there's a process that will help for when we have more complicated equations. Um, so the idea seems to be whatever operation is happening to the x, I undo it. I do the opposite thing to both sides. So for example, what if I had x divided by 11 equals 2? Multiply both sides by 11. Why? Because that's how I get x. What's happening to a poor little x? Being divided by 11. So if I multiply by 11, I undo that division by 11, and I see that x used to be 22. And how do you check that? Plug it in, you get 22 divided by 11 is 2. It checks. <laughs> Good job, Joe. <laughs> I know. So these are very simple equations, but one thing about this course is you guys have very different backgrounds. So if you feel like everybody around you understands everything, maybe they've taken this course before. And this is the easy shit for them. Or maybe they just took a course and you haven't taken a math course in 10 years. Right? You with me? So I always, if I, what I used to always say, I always forget to say this, is if I'm going too fast, slow me down. If I'm going too slow, deal with it. All right? Okay, maybe, maybe. All right. Uh, but let's step it up a bit. So let me see if you guys understand some, some basics of solving equations. What if you saw this kind of thing? Ooh, I made that work. Well, this will work. Okay. Yeah, good. So one thing that you look for in a more complicated equation is where you want to distribute. Because the reason that is, I want to get rid of shit. I want to get x by itself. But currently, this is all stuck inside. But if I distribute, I free them up. And then I can move them around. So what do you get when you distribute? 3x. Yeah, 3x. I like it. Now you come up to a, an option. So now you have kind of a, 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 two things at once happening. What would you need to do to this to get the x by itself? You want to divide by 3. Why do I not normally want to divide by 3 right away? Because I could make fractions. And I'm in the middle of the problem, so then I have to work with them. Should you be able to if you had to? Yes. If you have the option, would you? No. Do you think I know math pretty well? I ain't going to make no freaking fractions if I don't have to. I'm human. If I do that, I'm going to make more places for me to make mistakes. So you, that's why you almost always, almost always divide last. Because if you're going to make a fraction, you want it to be the last step. Fraction, I'm done. <laughs> All 
right, instead of in the middle. Now, I'm not saying you're never going to have to work fractions in the middle. You will. Too bad. But if you have the option, shit, yeah, that's why you almost always divide last. So what's the next thing I'm going to do here? Subtract six. Subtract six. To both sides. Divide by three. Five thirds. And again, if the if the instructions don't say anything, you can leave it like that. If they say answer must be a mixed number, what would you write? Mixed number, not a decimal. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got their calculator right there. <laughs> Calculators can pass dice. Um, okay. So let's let's up it a little more. Let's see. Let me give you guys one to try totally on your own. Of course, it's the hardest one yet. That's how math works. See, maybe it's all right. What was it? five nine seven five? Five nine seven nine. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, five nine seven nine. Okay. Catch up to you guys. So here, what do you get here? 28. 28. Oops. Good. Good. The X's are almost by themselves. There's no X's over there, so now I want to move the numbers over there. X's on one side, numbers on the other side. So you get negative 7X equals negative 26. And then divide by negative 7. I like it. Kabam. Gross number, but we don't care, so we're done. And Mixed number? So what would this look like as a mixed number? 7 goes under 26 three times with how many left over? Five. 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 I look real quick, real quick. Um, this is another thing I don't think you guys ever really see. Watch this, 26 sevenths. Is this 21 plus 5 over 7? Why did I pick 21? Because 7 goes into it. 21 divided by 7. Plus 5 divided by 7, that's 3 and 5 sevenths. Yes. Kind of neat, right? Yeah. <laughs> sure, man. <laughs> Throw math up there, bad boy. Alright. Uh, let's see. Oh, let me give you this. So, let's see. Sure, it doesn't matter either side. So, I've got a little sheet. It's got kind of like a general Solomon equations, like a little step-by-step -step thing, right? I want you to try the problems at the bottom of the front, and then we'll look at them, and then it'll probably be time to head out. So we'll do the other side next time. So focus on the side that's got all the colors on it. Turn this guy off. Oh, poor little dude taking a